photoelectric emission. Photoelectric emission occurs when some metal surfaces are illuminated by electromagnetic radi radiation of a sufficiently high frequency and electrons are emitted from the surfaces. And we call these electrons photoelectrons. Okay, let's now explain photoelectric emission. So what happens is that you can vary the two characteristics of EM wave. One is obviously the frequency. The other one is the intensity. When the EM waves is actually radiated on the metal target, the energy of the EM wave is being absorbed. When the energy is being absorbed, electrons from lower energy level can pop out and actually be emitted. So once the electrons are emitted, you can set up a charge plate to actually attract the electrons. And when the electrons reaches the charge plate, you will flow, you will flow to the earth and you can register a current reading. So this experimental setup allows us to study photoelectric emission. So one of the interesting findings, so when the intensity is not high enough for observable photoelectric emission, we should be increasing the intensity. So that because if you increase the intensity, you are increasing the overall energy provided by the EM wave. And if you wait long enough, and if you radiate it, and you actually allow the duration of the radiation of the EM wave on the metal, you would be able to provide sufficient energy to be absorbed by the electron so the electron can undergo photoelectric emission. But what is interesting is that no matter how they increase the intensity, and no matter how long the duration of the time is going to be, no photoelectric emission is observed. That is the reason why we know that the wave theory is inadequate to explain it. For wave theory, frequency should not be a factor that affects photoelectric emission. However, what is interesting in this experiment is that when they alter the frequency, they are able to detect observable photoelectric emission. That explains that the electromagnetic wave actually behave more as a particle. So the particle theory is what we're learning uh, what we're learning in this topic. And in particle theory, we actually have a formula that we use is E equal to HF. E is the energy of a photon. So a photon is a packet of electromagnetic energy for a specific frequency. So E is the energy of a photon, H is the Planck's constant, and F is the frequency. Meaning to say, as you increase the frequency or you adjust the frequency, you are adjusting the energy packet that's been given to the metal. So if the energy packet is actually sufficient for the photon to actually to be emitted. Then photoelectric emission will occur and you have photoelectrons that's emitted and you'll be able to register a current. We now have a summary of the observations that support the particle theory and argue against the wave theory. These observations could actually be asked for exam, in exam. So let's run through it. First, photoelectric emission is not affected by the intensity of the radiation, as explained earlier. The rate of emission of photoelectron is actually affected by the intensity of the radiation. Because if you increase the intensity of the radiation, you're increasing the rate of the number of photons per unit time being bombarded on the metal targets, therefore resulting in larger number of photoelectrons being emitted. Next, frequency affects the kinetic energy of the photoelectrons, which can be quantified by the potential difference across the plane. We'll later look at the equations for this. Next, no photoelectric emission is observed if the frequency of the radiation is too low, because if the energy of photon is not sufficiently high enough, then it is unable to actually overcome the energy gap. And finally, the occurrence of the photoelectric emission is immediate and without time lapse. Let's take a look at the photoelectric equation. Photoelectric equation states that the energy provided by the photon is being absorbed by the electron. Part of the energy absorbed by the electron is used to overcome the work function energy. So what is the work function energy? Work function energy is the amount of energy that's needed to move the, out, to move the electrons in the outermost electron shell to the surface of the metal so that it can undertake photoelectric emission. So hence, work function energy is a minimum value. And as far as for the energy of a photon is concerned, one has to bear in mind is either you absorb the entirety of the energy provided by the photon or you don't absorb it. So once you absorb the energy of the entire photon, the photon will be gone. So those energy subtract the work function energy will be the energy that is converted to kinetic energy of the photoelectrons. So this photoelectrons that's emitted has this kinetic energy and that's a maximum value. From this expression, we can substitute the Planck's equation whereby energy of photon is HF equal to work function energy plus half mv squared 
And we can also express the work function energy in terms of what we term as a threshold frequency. So threshold frequency is the minimum frequency before photoelectric emission is observable. So F0 is again a minimum value. And by using this expression, we could plot a graph of kinetic energy versus the frequency. Okay, if I plot kinetic energy versus the frequency, H will be the gradient. So let's take a look. This is actually the graph. So you plot kinetic energy versus the frequency. So the gradient of the line is actually H. The next thing that we want to introduce is what we term as a stopping potential. What it means is that photoelectrons that's coming out from the metal surface possess a certain kinetic energy, as mentioned earlier, is a maximum value. So you can now set, you can now adjust the voltage of this plate to become negative. The reason is because you want to hot the electrons from reaching the plate. So you can adjust the, the potential of this plate until the current flow becomes zero. And the stopping potential is also therefore a minimum value. So the kinetic energy is actually a maximum value. And you have to bear in mind that the stopping potential is actually a minimum value. So in this case, you can say that the, you can say that the kinetic energy is all converted to electric potential energy. So the EVS is equal to half mv squared equal to hf minus this, minus hf minus work function. And you can also express that in this form. And therefore, it is possible for us to sketch a graph of Vs against the frequency. If I sketch Vs against the frequency, then you need to note that the gradient is h divided by e. Finally, let's take a look at the final graph. In this final graph, we are plotting the current registered by the emitter vis-a-vis -vis the potential that's actually on the charge plate, that's actually on this plate, that's receiving the photoelectrons. So in this case, when the photoelectrons is positive, then what happens is that some of the photoelectrons that does not have sufficient Ke to reach the metal plate to register the current would now be able to do that because by increasing the potential, by increasing the positive potential of this plate, is actually trying to provide electric potential energy to attract these photoelectrons onto the plate and thereafter to register the current. So that is the reason why as you increase the V, you tend to actually have an have a increasing current. Subsequently, you will reach saturation because that is governed by the number of, number of photoelectrons that has been emitted. Next is actually the stopping potential. When the potential has become negative, then the current will start gradually moving towards zero. As explained earlier, once the stopping potential is high enough, the, charge, the plates will be negative in charge. That will repel any photoelectrons from actually landing on the plate. And that value is actually a minimum value. Let's take a look at two changes that we can introduce, which will alter the graphs of the current and the potential of the charge plate. So to start off, this is actually the reference beam. So the first part we want to discuss is that we actually decide to lower the intensity of the electromagnetic wave. So when you lower the intensity, you keep the frequency to be the same. Therefore, firstly, the stopping potential remains the same. Because the intensity is lower, the rate and the number of photons that's been radiated on the metal has now been significantly reduced. Because of this, you will expect less photoelectrons to be emitted. The maximum kinetic energy of the photoelectrons will remain unchanged because the frequency is still the same. Because there are now fewer photoelectrons being emitted, you will find that the, uh, regardless of how you increase your potential, the positive potential of the charge plate, the current registered will actually decrease. So you can see that the, the current, the saturation current decreases from I0 to actually, for example, I1. Okay, let's now take a look at what happened when the frequency decreases and at the same intensity. When the frequency decreases, the first thing that will happen is that the maximum Ke of your photoelectrons will drop. And therefore, because of that, correspondingly, the stopping potential will actually be of a lower value. Next, when the frequency is lower, there will be now be a smaller pool of, photo, of electrons at energy level can, that can undertake photoelectric emission. So we take a look at an example. Say if we have an atom with four few energy levels being bombarded with photons at lower, energy, lower frequency. Now, with the smaller energy packet that each of the photon has, only electrons in the third and fourth electron cell may able to participate in photoelectric emission. Unlike earlier, maybe unlike earlier, electrons in the first and second electron cell could also participate. 
So in this case, you will find that inevitably the saturation current will also decrease from I0 to actually I1.